Hi guys, welcome back to UK Fly Fisher. Unfortunately, Wales has just gone on to lockdown for two weeks, so that gives me a great opportunity to try and keep you guys entertained. And I'm gonna do that by bringing out a new video every single day for the next 14 days. Now in today's video, it's been much requested from my good friend Lloyd Williamson, we're gonna be tying the squirmy worm. Now he's noticed that fishing with our squirmy worms, they last a lot longer than the others on the market. And that's because I tie them slightly differently to some of the videos you would have seen before. This allows us to make sure our squirm is stronger, usually lasting us 9, 10, 11 fish, instead of, you know, the average one that you get two or three fish from. Now we all know squirm is a very fragile material and it's gonna break, so I never fish with the expectation of landing hundreds of fish, but if I can spend an extra few seconds on the vise to make sure that fly lasts you a little bit longer, that's something I'm always gonna do. Now in this video, I'm gonna be using tanks and beads. Two reasons for that. Firstly, I'm using this squirmy as a stalking pattern. So I want a bit of weight to get down in front of the fish and see his reaction to the fly. Now the second reason, and the main reason we're tying it for Lloyd, is that if you fish this fly under a bung, you can be assured that your fly is fishing at the depth you set. So let's say you've got your bung here on the surface, or float, or a sight indicator, or whatever you want to call it. Let's say that's on the surface, and you've set your fly up to be three foot down. Now with a tungsten bead, you can be assured that if your getting takes at three foot down, your fly is at three foot down because the tungsten bead is dragging that directly down. Now if you're using a brass bead, this will happen. The water is moving from left to right of me, which means your fly is coming left to right. So you're using brass here. Maybe now your fly is fishing at two foot, but you don't realize because you've got it set at three foot, but you don't take into consideration the movement of the water. Now, if you go for, say, a plastic bead or maybe a beadless fly, your fly might be even higher in the surface. So that from the water surface to where your fly is, is actually a foot down. But what you've taken from that is that you're fishing at three foot. So you think the fish are at three foot. So you go on to your next tactic for the day, setting up, expecting them to be at three foot. When in all honesty, they were at a foot. So what we can get from the tanks and bead is we can find out the exact depth the fish are feeding at and then adjust our tactics throughout the day to suit that depth. So, without any further delay, let's get into the video and find out how I tie my squirmy worms. So, the squirmy we're going to be using is the Kindale Flies Earthworm Squirmy material. Seems to be a lot stronger than Venyards and a couple of others on the market. We're going to take a full strand and cut away about an inch of the material just to get the length we need. Like so. And then for the beads, once again, we're going to be using Kindale Flies, Tungsten Beads. This is the Speckled Cream. Gives a little bit of contrast and adds weight to the fly for us. And to get this onto the material, we're going to use a bobbin threader. We're just going to pop it in the small end. So it sits on your bobbin threader like so. Then we're going to come in with our earthworm material. Put it between the bobbin threader. And then pull it down slowly. It'll stretch because the tungsten beads are narrower than the uh, brass, but it'll go on. And we're going to pull the bead down to about halfway along this material. And then, because when you thread it through, it can sometimes damage the top, we're going to take away 5mm from the top, just to tidy the fly up. For the hook of the fly, we're going to be using a size 14 blob and buzzer blob hook. These are incredibly sharp, really strong, and they have an incredible hook hold. All we're gonna do is wrap that material round our finger, so the bead's there, pop the hook between the material and the bead, slide it round, like so, and then just pop that in our vise. Now for our tying silk, we're gonna be using a 140 UTC Olive. Try and use a multi-strand tying silk it does less damage to the uh, squirmy material. And because it lies flat, it just really protects that body. We're trying to make a fly here that lasts a bit longer than the average squirmy on the market. And we've come up with a great way of doing that. Now we're gonna put the vise on the side slightly. And we're gonna put down a layer of tying silk along the full length of the hook. The reason we put it on the side is you don't get the squirmy material caught up while you're taking a layer of tying silk down the body like so, all the way to back to behind the bead. Then we can turn our vise back up right, come away, snip away that waste piece. Now I'm gonna hold the squirmy material and push the bead forward at the same time and take two loose turns behind the bead. Make sure they're loose, do not pull tight. 
and then we're going to pull the material backwards and take open turns down the hook shank. And then we're going to go back up in open turns still and back down again. Like so. This creates a really, really strong hold and it doesn't damage the material as some of the modern ways of tying the squirmy does. Now to bulk up that fly and add a bit of flash, we've got the Glister Sparkle Dubbin in brown. So we're going to come on here and dub some of this on. Again, we're not looking to pull anything super tight. I'm just going to catch it in gently. Then dub it onto my tying silk and then we're going to take it gently up the body. To behind the bead, we're going to go for a slightly thicker forex. I'm going to just give it a couple more turns at this point. Like so. Now I've got a stra straggly piece there. It doesn't really matter, but I'm just going to come in and snip that away so it's a bit tighter. Now, at this point, all we need to do is whip finish the fly, but we're not going to use varnish or super glue or anything like that, because once again, they'll damage the squirmy material. Also, if you're whip finishing behind a bead, you shouldn't need varnish anyway. Fish's teeth are never going to hit it. You're using 140 UTC uh, tying silk, which is already waxed, so it's going to hold tight. There's nothing that's going to make that come loose. So we're just going to do three turns of the whip finishing tool, like so. Hold the bead and gently pull down. Do not pull down hard again. You're trying to protect this material at all costs. Snip away your excess. And there we have it, guys. That is my version of the squirmy worm. It's a great way to tie down. They last a lot longer. We're having eight, nine, ten fish uh, on these flies before they're breaking. Whereas with most of the squirmies out there, you're getting two or three. And you know it's a new fly job. So it's worth taking a little bit extra. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Give it a tie. Let me know how you get on. Comment below on if you found it more durable. We certainly have. So we hope you enjoy it and we hope it catches you many fish. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.